Well, fasten your seatbelts for a record summer blockbuster season. More and more nowadays, a major film must be chock full of special effects, even break even. But are we getting to the point of no return where audiences are numbed by sensory overload? What role exactly should technology play in Hollywood? Well, joining me to try at least answer that is legendary film critic and friend to Tech TV, mm -hmm. Mr. Roger Ebert. Thanks so much for joining us, and good to see you in such good health. I'm feeling great, Michaela, and, and it's nice great. to be here. Let's start with episode two. It's inevitable. We have to talk okay. about it. Harry Knowles got a sneak peek yeah, uh, somewhat yeah. illegally. No, what is the bias? Somewhat illegally. No, <laughs> somewhat. it wasn't illegally at all. Okay. Uh, I think that Harry actually is on the studio's list as now as a way to kind of leak advance looks at some of these movies. And uh, he kind of gets into the back door, but somebody leaves it open. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like to look at the trailers. I haven't looked at the trailers on, on, on the web. Uh, I haven't read reviews like Harry's review because I kind of want to go in cold. The problem with a movie like this is it's so anticipated. There have been rumors going around about it for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And by the time you walk into the theater, there's a sense of anticlimax. Right. So I really try to go like this with... And you uh, do that with all your films. Yeah, I, I would just assume walk in cold. Okay. It's the same with Spider-Man, mm -hmm. which uh, in a way I'm looking forward to more than uh, clones because... Uh, there hasn't been a Spider-Man movie before, and I read the Spider-Man comic books, you know, and I feel like I have a little Spidey sense myself. You know. <laughs> I think you do. Uh, yeah. Well, let's talk about that. You've, we talked about Attack of the Clones. We talked about Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. This summer, there are some pretty big block, blockbusters that are coming out that are that are heavy, heavily touched up with, oh, with yeah. tech. Yeah. Is it to the point now, Roger, that a, a, a blockbuster isn't worth its weight unless it has a good dose of tech? Well, you now have the formula for winning the weekend, which is you have to have a movie that comes out on Friday that appeals especially to teenage boys. Right. Uh, that has a lot of special effects, that has a science fiction or martial arts theme, mm -hmm. and has nonstop wall to wall action, and lots of weird stuff happening to it, and no uh, intimate human relationships or long speeches. And that's going to be the one that wins. Well, in a way, for example, Scorpion King is, is kind of like a low grade a specimen of that life form. Right. And uh, it is absolutely nothing but two hours of swords and sorcery and martial arts. And The Rock. And The Rock and special effects. The Rock is kind of a special effect of his own. <laughs> Let's talk about the special Good. effects thing. Is it possible that we've gotten to a point where too, there's just too much? I think of films that we've seen recently. For example, Steven Spielberg's AI. Mm -hmm. It was it bombed at box office offices for all intents and purposes. Is it to a point that viewers are saying, OK, already? You well, don't I, don't think overwhelm it, me. I don't think it bombed because of the special effects. I think it bombed because it told a story that moved in too many different directions and didn't conclude in a way that the audience quite understood. Mm -hmm. And I think it was probably a better film than a lot of people, including myself, gave it credit for. I want to go back and look at it again more thoughtfully. Not that I, my review wasn't perfect, but nevertheless, um, what happens is we reach a certain level of perfection in special effects and the audience stops caring about how great they are. And sooner or later, maybe in a year or two, uh, it will just get to be same old, same old, right. you know? And then they'll have to go back sooner or later, I think, to people and stories. Well, let's talk about people. Let's jump off there. We know, I've, I know that you have expressed a certain amount of admiration for digitally created characters like those in Final Fantasy. I like Final Fantasy as an experiment, yeah. As an experiment. Is that as far as it goes, or do you think there, that, that concept has legs? Well, I thought Final Fantasy was a pretty good movie, and I enjoyed the fact that the people and their environments and those uh, other worlds that we wouldn't necessarily be able to see mm -hmm. uh, in any other way uh, were all at the same level of reality. I think that's right. better than putting human actors in front of blue screen, you know, and putting the planets behind them or something. And uh, I, I'm sorry that Final Fantasy tanked. It's a mystery to me why there was apparently not even any curiosity on opening night about it. I mean, you would think that there would be a certain number of people who would be there just to see what it looked like. Overhyped, it, perhaps? Oh, it really... I don't understand it. Which director do you think is the best at utilizing these high-tech digital tools that we have out there now? Um, well, Lucas is pretty doggone good, yeah. you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to clones, even though I don't want to know anything about it until I see it. I think Lucas is pretty good. And also, you know, Spielberg did a good job in AI. Yes, he did. Uh, I mean, if you just look at it from the special mm -hmm. effects point of view, it was magnificent. All right. Roger Ebert, always a pleasure mm -hmm. to have you here, my mm -hmm. friend. Thank you so much.